Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we are going to discuss functions in Excel. This is video number 12 of a planned set of training videos on basic Excel usage. The target audience is students and the objective is to get you up to speed quickly on using Excel. For best results, put your play speed at 2x and or jump to the chapters of interest in the timeline below. First up, what are functions? What are functions? Well, a function down here is part of an expression. And an expression is inside of a formula. A function can perform calculations. A function can act on values in a cell or in cell ranges. This function call here has an asterisk one that indicates it has arguments or parameters, synonyms, same thing. And so the parameter can be nothing, could be blank, function open and close parenthesis. The parameter could be a cell, A1, B1, it could be a cell range, A1 colon B2. It could be multiple arguments, 1 comma 5 comma A1. Functions have all kinds of different argument signatures or patterns inside of the parentheses. What are some examples of functions? The sum function, the count function, average function, medium function. We're going to look at examples of all those in a few minutes. Next up, frequently used math functions. So let's demo some basic math related functions. And we'll just run through the list here. So basic math, let's do a square root. Equals SQRT of 16. Square root of 16, hit enter, it's four. If we want the log of 100 equals the log, and I could do all uppercase too, it doesn't matter. And I can do the IntelliSense. And uh, based on what I type, the list of all possible functions gets narrowed down. But I'll just go ahead and go with log and Throw in 100 because that'll be 10. 10 squared is 100. The log of 16 base 4 equals log of 16 base 4. 4 squared goes into 16, so 2 is our answer. And we'll take the natural log of 23.1407, and that's pi. And then we will flip that, invert it with exp. And actually, I could do exp. There is a function called pi with open and close parentheses. So instead of entering 3.1416, I could just do pi like that and get the inverse. So that's natural log and exponent. And let's do some basic aggregating functions. Now, not to be confused, there actually is an aggregate function now. So I shouldn't be using this as a SQL term, but basically min, max, that count sums. That's aggregating. So let's do a sum equals sum, open parentheses, select my range. I'll include the alpha because it should just be ignored. And there's my sum, 252. Take the minimum equals the min, highlight my range, close parentheses, hit enter, 19 is the smallest, equals the maximum of the same range, 50. If I wanted to do the range or span, it'd be the max minus the min. There is no command for range, but you can calculate it by subtracting that. Uh, count equals the count of the same range. Now, I want to point out there's four by two, there's eight, right? But one of them is an alpha. So when I do count, I get seven. The alpha is excluded. Only numerics are counted. However, if I do count A for include the alphas, count alphas too, and I do the range, I get eight. And then, you know, I'm going to show you an auto sum. So I'll click to the bottom of this range. I'm not going to do both. I'm just going to do one range. And Excel has an auto sum function or button because it's so frequently used. So I could just click the button and it'll immediately go to sum and it'll go straight up until it hits a blank. Hit enter and it sums those for me. Delete it. What if instead of auto sum I hit the drop down? Well then I get an option. I don't have to choose the default sum. I could do the average. So we'll do the average. Or I could do whatever else is there. Min, max, count of the numbers, more functions. A lot more functions in there. Medians, percentiles, Excel has so many functions now, et cetera, t-tests, everything. So you can always do that as well. You can just come in here, click this button, and quickly
automatically apply your function call. Uh, let's go to some basic statistical functions. Let's look at the equals the mode, which will be the most frequently occurring. Oh, I didn't double anything. <laughs> What's it going to pick? NA, there wasn't one. Either that or the alpha. Let me uh, flip this to 50. So it'll be two 50s. Aha, the alpha was throw on mode. But 50 is the mode because it's the value that occurred the most frequently in there. It occurred twice, everything else occurred once. Let's do the average equals average. Select this range. Oops, went too far. Use the up arrow. Close parenthesis, hit enter, 37.75. Equals median. Open parenthesis, select the range, close parenthesis, 39 and a half, equals standard deviation. I'm just going to go with the regular. Oh, that's backdated. So now I have to choose standard deviation of a sample. Wow, of a sample or of the population. They actually distinguish between the two. That's fantastic. I didn't realize that. We will do the sample. We'll just act like it's a sample. And it'll be a slightly different standard deviation calculation. Matter of fact, now I'm curious. So 12.51, let's do, and so that was the standard deviation of the sample. Let's do a standard deviation. Oopsie, I typed it wrong. Standard deviation of the population. And select the same range and close parentheses. How different are they? Oh, they're a bit different. It's such a small sample size. That's why. If I got a bigger sample size, they would get closer in proximity. Anyway, interesting. Uh, so I should actually adjust that to be standard deviation dot s for sample. Uh, and then variance. I suspect variance is going to be the same. It is. <laughs> Fine. We'll take the variance of the sample size and we will have our sample set. And there's our variance. And this should be var dot s. And that's some basic basic statistical functions in Office 365. Older versions of Office weren't distinguishing back in the earlier 2000s. And I think that wraps it up for basic math functionality. Later we'll run through some of these drop downs and look at all the hundreds and hundreds of functions that are available. But for now, just wanted to touch the basic ones. Next up, frequently used text functions. So here are some common text related functions. Let's change the case. So change John Doe to all lower, all upper, or proper case it if it starts out as all lower. I'll just go ahead and copy it from here. It's faster. And paste it in. Equals lower John Doe. And there we go. Even though the input has an uppercase J into D, the output is all lowercase. And now vice versa. Let's copy this and make it all uppercase. And paste that formula in here equals upper John Doe, and sure enough, the value is all uppercase. And then let's, uh, I think so I wouldn't do that escape to get rid of it. Proper John Doe. Let's copy that, paste it in, and see what it does. It properly takes the lowercase j and d and makes them uppercase. So if you want to change case on text, lower in the value, upper in the value, or proper in the value. And it works on functions too. If I wanted to put a, if I wanted to put a Jack, and then all uppercase Ryan, and that cell is F3, I could come in here and get rid of my literal string and put in F3 and hit enter, and it's going to work just the same. F3, and proper is going to take this and make it all proper. F3, there we go. Text extract, this is useful. You'll use that a lot. Let's say a field comes in that has three parts to it. One, two, three, four, dash ABC, dash three, two, four. And if it's always zero padded, example, maybe that's a zero, leading zero. So you're always going to have those fixed size, four, dash three, dash three. Then you can use left, mid, and right. So if we want to take the left four characters, we use the left function. And so it's taking left of the cell B8, comma, four characters. And the next one's going to take the mid of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and take three characters after the sixth position. So this should give us ABC, and it does. 
And then if we want to take the right three, call uh, characters 024, then we take the right three. Copy this, paste it in, there's our 024. Now if we went the right four, we're going to get the dash, and so on. Let's undo it. So text extract is really useful. And two more, they're text builders. These are very useful too. Let's say we want to concatenate dog, cat, leopard, and goldfish, and we want a comma, CSV, comma separated value list. We can use tech, uh, concatenate or text join. Concatenate require, it just takes, concatenate is basically A plus B plus C plus D, where each of those letters is some string, and it just concatenates them all together. And in Excel, you can't use a plus sign anyway. You'd have to actually equals, quotes, some values, quotes, and you'd use the ampersand as the concatenation operator. I think I missed that earlier when I was... Uh, describing operators. That's a string concatenator. So here's a good place to talk about it. And actually, as long as I'm writing the string, <laughs> there we go. So I have a string and a number, and it just strings them right together. But that's tedious if you have a lot of different cell values. So uh, at some point, I'll do a training video on generating a SQL string generator or a test data generator using Excel. It's pretty cool, and I make heavy use of text join and concatenate. Anyway, so concatenate dog, comma, cat, comma, leopard, comma, goldfish. Copy that function, paste it over here, and there we go. Dog, cat, leopard, goldfish, and I concatenate them all. Now, this option here, a text join, a little bit cleaner. Because, well, here, let me show you another feature. <laughs> it didn't change color, but it will work. I should be able to click this. IntelliSense comes up, and I'm going to click this function, and there we go. That's what I wanted to show you, was that any given function in the, for, the formula window here, you click the function, and you get a nice help box with all the dialogue, with all the arguments. So text 1, 2, 3, 4, that means I could add text 6, text 7, whatever. And so for the concatenate operator, it doesn't care. It's just stringing them all together. But check out the difference with the text join. First, I got to go create it. So let me highlight this, not the single quote. Let me paste it over here so I have a true function. And you can see that it's the same, these two here. Equals this cell, equals this cell. I'm basically, and it's going to give me a true. And basically what I was doing, I can put the parentheses in and it'll make it more readable. I was saying, true or false, does this cell equal that cell? And they do, they're identical, so I get a true. Delete it. Um, that's just an interesting little function trick that I do sometimes when I'm comparing data. So stay on focus here. Function, let's go to the text join and look at it. Totally different. There is a text one, two, three, and you could add four, five, six, seven, but there's static arguments at the beginning that are always required, and that is a delimiter. So you don't have to repeat the delimiter in between here and in between, you know, after each element, you don't have to add a quote, comma, quote. And then ignore empty, what does that even mean? If true, ignores empty cells. So if there's empty cells, so apparently if I, instead of hard coding a literal dog, cat, leopard, if I had cell A1, cell A2, cell A5, if any of those cells were blank, it would just ignore it and skip it and basically act as if there was nothing there. So that's nice. You can make it a true or false and set that. So two different ways. I frequently use the text join for stuff, and I used to use a concatenate. I still do. Some If, if I know I'm not going to have a delimited list and I'm just going to have a bunch of values, I'll use concatenate. If I know it's going to be delimited by commas or spaces because I'm writing a sentence or whatever, then I'll use text join. But they're both very useful. While I'm here, I'm going to take a quick detour and explain a couple other things. So I'm in the function arguments dialog pop-up and from the formula bar for the text join. You can scroll and down it goes. There's quite a few options. It goes all the way to 252 text values. If I wanted to pass that many arguments in, I could. So there's a scroll bar. There's help on any given function. Whatever function you're looking at, you can click help. It's going to go out to the web. It's on my other screen. To Microsoft. And then it's going to give you the details. That's handy. And I'm going to hit... I could make some changes. See, that, those are bad changes. It's going to break it. I can hit cancel and it'll undo those changes. And likewise, I can be up here and enter something, go, oh no, I don't want to do that. Well, just hit the cancel. Or if I really do want it, hit the green checkbox and it should give me an error. Yep, it's gonna give me an error. I can hit okay and then I can hit the X to undo it. 
So those are just some tricks with using the formula bar while you're dealing with a function. Next up, frequently used lookup functions. Next, we're going to demo three lookup functions. VLOOKUP, which is really useful. INDEX, not so useful. And MATCH, not so useful. VLOOKUP. So I went out to McDonald's menu and grabbed a bunch of their burgers and grabbed the actual calories. Kind of fun to do. And over here, I'm going to do a VLOOKUP. And I'm going to look up what are the calories for a Big Mac. So I've hard-coded the static value Big Mac in here. That's the value I want to look up or reference by. And then the value I'm going to look up for the Big Mac is the 560 calories. So let's do the VLOOKUP. So let's start it out. And this is going to be the actual equation. But let's build it. Equals VLOOK. And it comes up. So I'm going to double-click it. I'm going to go ahead and just build it by clicking the function. And what's my lookup value? Well, let's click it. That is the value I want to look up, Big Mac. And now that I've selected cell F4, what's the table array? Well, I'm going to include the column header. I don't know that you need to, but that's my table array I'm going to look up in. Uh, quick note, years and years and years ago, the source range had to be alphabetized. It doesn't anymore. Excel doesn't care. <laughs> so it's all over the map, Ds and Bs and Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. You just have to have a list. So that's my table array. What column index number do I want to look up? One? No. I mean, that's the reference column I'm going to look up Big Mac in, but I want to return column two. So column two is the column number which the matching index should be returned. So column two is what I want to return. There will be times you'll have a reference table, maybe even a whole worksheet with five or six columns, and you'll have other worksheets do a VLOOKUP, and some will return column two, some will return column three, column four. So it's really handy in VLOOKUP to be able to specify which column you want to return. And it's going to do a, a it's going to find based on the leftmost column here. And my range lookup. Now notice, lookup value, it tells me what the lookup value is. Is the value to be found in the first column of the table. So it's always going to search based on the first column of the table. What's my array? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, range lookup. It's a logical value. Find the closest match? No. I, don't, I want an exact match. It is case sensitive, too. I was just, I'll show you something down below about that. Um, so, exact match is true. So, I will put in a true. Oops. It doesn't matter, but I'll do all of the case to match what they're showing. Wait a second. Find an exact match equals false. Sorry. So I have to put in false. i got to make sure I read that. And hit OK. So there we go. This function looked up Big Mac and then returned the calories. You know, I'm really curious. Let's look at formulas and let's look at precedence. Oh, nice. So definitely Big Mac was a precedent because it was cell F4. But the entire range, a nice little blue box, and there it is. I like that. So we'll remove those. That's VLOOKUP. Very powerful. Uh, if we want to do a tweak, I could return the first column. Big Mac, Big Mac. But what's the point in that? So we'll return the second column. You know, if we want to demo it for you, uh, I don't know what the protein counts are. We'll just put in bogus garbage values. Format painter here. Make it look pretty. And we'll just put in random value, and we'll multiply the random value times all the way up to 45. There we go. So I have a bunch of, oh man, that's terrible. You know what? Here, we'll have a minimum of 15 grams all the way up to whatever. Which one did I change? That one? Fine. Copy that, paste it to all of them, and then instead of with a random function, boy, I'm off on a tangent, but it is a function, and random is very handy. I use it all the time. Watch this. If I uh, make a change, make a change, make a change, random is going to recalculate. The spreadsheet is going to recalculate, and every time the spreadsheet recalculates, these values change. I don't want that. So why don't I copy, right-click, paste special the values. There. Now the values are locked in. I don't like all those decimals. Let's get rid of some of those. There we go. So, 
now we've made some bogus protein values up, we can actually choose column three. Oh yeah, you know why it doesn't like that. Actually, let's use the troubleshooting that we learned in a prior video. Well, I'm not gonna bother. It's because our range doesn't include protein. So I have to go in here to our range and go, oh yeah. I could type D or I could just grab and pull it over and hit enter. Should work now, 21.75, Big Mac, yep, there we go. So I want column three or I want column two, doesn't matter. So VLOOKUP, very, very powerful, very nice. Let's move along. Let's go look at index. Not as useful, but let's do it anyway. So let's just go in and see what it does. Equals index, double click here in the formula bar. So it's going to deal with an array, and a row number, and a column number, or a reference, and a row number, and a column number. Eh, I'll just choose the first one. And I'll hit the, well, I don't want the help. I will hit the, yes, yes, there we go. So what's my array? Well, let's go back up here and pick my array. Now, this is a single dimensional array, so now I'll do both. Actually, I'll do all three, fine, there we go. So I picked the entire source data set. That's my array. What row number do I wanna return? There's no nice automatic search like VLOOKUP. So I have to look at this and go uh, two, four, six, eight. Return the eighth row and what column? Oh, the second column, well, duh. I'd rather have it looked up. Well, no, I don't want that. I want the first column, Big Mac. Now, if I copy and paste my formula, it works, but that's just coincidence. Really, watch this, C3 to E13. When I go back here, B13 to D13 is really what I want. So let me highlight both of those. Hit F4 to make it absolute references, and then let me copy and paste it over. There we go. Now, left, right, left, right. Notice the function doesn't change. Let your eye watch as I move back and forth. There's no difference. So what I really want to do is go to the second column and change it to return the second column. So that's what index does. It takes an array and you tell it return this row, this column, and then return this row, this column. Yeah, not very useful. But sometimes it can be. Uh, and then a match. So a match, let's let's go look at what a match is. So I have the value Big Mac typed in there and I wanna look up the 560. So I can use match, so let's do that. Equals, oops, match, I'll double click, pop it up. Do the help. What's my lookup value? Well, I wanna look up Big Mac, okay? Click this. What's my lookup array? It's the same that it always is. I probably should just name the whole array and then I don't have to keep, you can do that, you know. Uh, formulas, nah, anyway. I'd go in here and I'd define a name and then I wouldn't have to do a range anymore. I'd have the whole thing named and in the dropdown, but I'm not gonna do that. So lookup value was Big Mac, lookup array was this guy. What's my match type? I don't know, what is it? Match type is number one, zero, negative one, which, okay, well, what do we have? And it's asking me, so I saw in here, fine, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one, I'm gonna put the wrong value. And I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to get an NA. But if I come back in here, delete this, I get, I should get, let me hit comma. There we go. So when I hit comma, I get a definition of what 1, 0, or negative 1 is. And I actually want an exact match. So there we go. Do an exact match, hit Enter. I'm still getting an NA. E26. B26, B13, yeah, I know what the problem is. So <laughs> I have to actually keep it all in one. There we go. So match had to stay within one column. I had to look up within this range that value. It is not aware of these other columns, and it gave me an error. So match is, let's look at the definition function. 
returns the relative position of an item in an array that matches a specific value in the order. So it, see the little squiggle, it just wants a single dimensional array list. And that's a single dimensional array list. As soon as I go over here, it's two dimensional. And, so, and, and, and so on, because it has, here it's just one dimensional, position eight, that's it. Here is two dimensional, here is two dimensional, because I have a row and a column and that particular function only wants to row. So I, I don't know how useful match is. It can be if you're trying to deal with one list, but anyway, my favorite is VLOOKUP. Use it all the time for some of the trickier stuff that I do, and I bet you will too. Next up, frequently used logic functions. So now we're gonna demo three frequently used logic functions, the if function, the count if, and the sum if. So let's start with the if uh, equals if, Oh, I can go ahead and hit the function call here. Ah, escape, try that again. Equals if, put up open parenthesis now when I click the function in order. So what's my logic test? Oh, I'm just gonna hard code it and say true. There is no test. So that means it's always gonna work. And then I'll just put in, yep, if it's true and nope. If it's false, well, it's never gonna be false because I hard coded it to always be true. And there's my yep. Uh, likewise, let's do it again, equals, you know what, it's going to be quicker just to copy paste it. This one, yeah, let's just copy paste it in the function. And then I'll hit the FX and then you can see it. So if one plus one equals two, and it's showing me what that evaluates to, true, then say yeah, otherwise say nope. Now if I change this to a two, it's false and it's going to be nope and it evaluates to nope. If I change it back to a one, Going to evaluate to a yep. So I'll hit OK and there we go. I got a yep. And copy paste. I didn't get the single quote. That way it actually comes out as a form formula. So let's hit the function 1 plus 1 equals 3. Nope. And you can actually, I'll just do this one up. If open parenthesis function, what's my logical test? That this cell equals the value hello with double quotes wrapping it. And that function is true. If I put an X, it's false. So if there, then yep. Otherwise, nope. And it's gonna return a yep because B6 is hello. So that's the if statement. It basically reads if, what's your condition, comma, what do I return if it's true, comma, what do I return if it's false? Next up, the count if. So I have this range of cells, and basically I want to count how many items there are that are less than four. So right there is five items, and that one there makes six items. So I have six items that I've highlighted that are below four. So let's see if we can do that. So we're gonna do equals count, double click it, hit the function, what value uh, I, yeah. That is not what I wanted. I wanted the count function. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, the I want to count if I accidentally hit count. Now that's what I'm expecting. So let me hit the function. What's the range? It's all of this data, good ones and bad ones. And what's my criteria? My criteria is that it be, the value be less than four. That's it. Don't have to put quotes or anything. Excel will figure it out. Hit okay and I got six and that's what we counted before. Those are, those five are less than four and that one makes six. And I could go change this and say, how many are less than five? Well, now it's gonna be, really, is it eight of them? Yes, it is because it's six and two makes eight. So the count if is very handy and the last one is sum if operates much like count if. So I'm going to have it go against this range, and I'm going to say sum everything that's greater than or equal to four. Well, four and four is eight, and five is thirteen. So let's do equals sum if. Double click it to finish. Hit the function. What range do I want? I will do this range. What are my criteria? It has to be greater than or equal to four. You know, 
Bold, required. Bold, required. Not bold, optional. What is it? Let's go look. Some range. Actual cells to some. If omitted the cells to... Oh, interesting. So if I had a row of header values or something and then a whole bunch of data down below, my criteria could be based on this range and then the sum range could be different but aligned. Anyway, in my case, it's not. I'm just summing what's here with some logic. And I get my 13. 4 plus 4 plus 5. So sum if, count if, and if. Very handy logical functions. Next up, frequently used date time functions. So here's three useful date time functions. There's a lot more than just these, but equals now, if I paste that in, it's going to give me the month, day, year, and the time, 10.05 p.m. military time. I don't particularly care for that formatting. Um, control one, oops, bring up the formatting window, number, it's custom. Eh, the date times that they provide, eh, those are all dates, those are times. Custom lets you really dial it in. It's supposed to have hour, minute, second. I'm not seeing the second, so let me hit OK on that. Yeah, well, that's the time. Control Z to undo, Control 1. Oh, you know what? I think there's also on the home menu. Let's see, what do we have? Long date, short date, not really. More number formats, pretty much where I was, the control one key. And then I have to go in and it's HMM. So I could put in an AM slash PM and that'll get rid of the military time 2200. Got to make it wider so you can read it. So that fixed that part. Uh, control one on the formatting for the date time. You know, if I want the second, then I have to put in colon second, second. And there we go. Now, me personally, I like to always sort from the very biggest all the way down to the smallest. And that way I can, if I convert it to text, it'll alphabetize. So if it was me, under the custom, more number formats, I would actually take this guy. And plus, having a single M and a single D, if it there's no zero prefixing the month because it's January, it's just one. I prefer this, but it's just me. Year, year, dash MM, dash DD. Now it's always going to sort. And then the hour, I would actually put two H's too, so it's zero prefix. Now they'll always be the same width, no matter what hour, month, day, year. They'll all line up nicely. Anyway, that's the now function plus a little bit of details tangent on formats because I hadn't touched it before and dates can get tricky. But anyway, that's that. So let's do equals today. And notice how it has no time part. It's just the date part. So January 18th, 2021. And then this last one is equals date and you hard code it yourself. So 19... 99 comma month is 12 comma day is 31 and it'll convert that into an actual date time so if i copy and paste down here the value it's going to give me the date value the serial date value 36525 so that's it's converting 12311999 the date function into this serial value. That's what's going on there. So those are some handy ones and there's a whole bunch more. And finally, a quick review on how to find all other functions. So there's hundreds of functions in Excel and they're all accessible either from this formula bar and the formula window and you can go pick financial, date, time, math, trig. And so as I click through statistical, down here, the select function changes. And look at, you know, I've dragged this thumb on the vertical scroll bar. Look at all those. Just statistical alone, must be 50 in there. Financial, 30 or 40 in there. There's just so many. Text, lots. And if you don't know, you can hit all. And then it's just going to go on and on and on. And you could look at your most recently used, too. User defined must be BBA. Engineering, nice. They sure have grown all the functions that are available. Logical, what's under information? 
Air is blank. Oh, yes. Is blank is air. There's some tricky stuff you can do. If is air, then hide the air. Uh, squash it so you don't have a big air in your spreadsheet. It just you can change it to space. I've used that one before. Anyway, it's even is logical. Lots of stuff in there. So that's one way is from the formula bar function and just browsing out to it. But there's also a cool way on the formulas menu. You can hit them here too. Financial, all the financial related functions, logical. Oh, I never showed you that, ands and ors. You can use those as well. So if is just one condition, but you can and together several, or together, you can do a switch statement, expression one, then value one. Anyway, lots of neat functions there for logic. Text, we hit some of them, but there's so many more. Find in the string get the length of the string, etc. Substitute, basically replacing text with uh, old text within the big string with new text. Lots and lots of different functions there for text. Date and time we already hit on a bit. A bunch of different options in there. Look up and reference. Here he is. Choose just so many. H lookup, uh, the lookup is vertical lookup, H lookup. I haven't used that horizontal lookup. Same thing, but transposed. Sort, interesting. So you can sort an array. In the data menu item, you can manually sort cells, but there's also a way to sort items in their memory. B lookup, X lookup. Huh, what is X lookup? Uh, what's running from the second range? Array. Oh, that's tricky. Instead of being within one range and doing a lookup, you have two ranges and they're interrelated, so it's a trickier lookup with trickier reference tables. Anyway, a lot of stuff for you to look through. Math and trig, didn't touch on that. Your signs, geometry, cosines, tangents, all that stuff. Degrees, probably even has polar coordinate conversions as well. And more functions, statistical, whole bunch of them, high level stuff. I saw the Fisher, yep. Poisson, and I've seen ANOVA, just lots of stuff in here. Uh, engineering calculations. Cube, huh, I wonder if that deals with the data cubes. I don't know what cube is. Information, those are useful. What's the sheet, what's the sheet name? Compatibility, that must be backward compatible. That's why it has a little error symbol, and that's binomial distribution, et cetera. And I bet under statistics they have a newer one by yes. And I bet if I go here, I'll find uh, yes, the old standard deviation. And then they had standard deviation P at some point there, Excel 2000. And then as I learned earlier in this training, they've replaced it with standard deviation dot P and dot S for population and sample. So that's the new ones, and then compatibility, they have some old ones. Your spreadsheets don't age out, and you don't have to change them everywhere. Interesting. And then web, what do they have there? Huh. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.